All right, I got the details built. Now it's time to get this cockpit painted. <laughs> Now in the previous video to this series, um, I took a look at just some basics of scratch building detail. Um, while it was specific to this model, as I said in that video, the techniques were generic enough that um, it, it could be applied to any model. Uh, the basic premise is you figure out what you want to put in, you, you cut, you start cutting shapes, you start sticking them into the model and uh, the more you do it, the more experience you gain at it, and the better you're able to execute what it is that you want to accomplish. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at some very simple methods for painting a cockpit. Now the things I'm going to show are, again, specific to this model, but the, the various techniques and the methodologies and the thinking can be applied to any model. Um, you know, before I started building sci-fi, I built aircraft. I built uh, it's 275, 280 aircraft over a period of about 10, 11 years. And, uh, so I painted a lot of cockpits. And so, uh, I've, I've, I take what I learned there and I've combined it with what I've learned in changing to sci-fi and other genres like that. And I, I think that it's helped me become a better cockpit painter. And one of the factors to consider is how much can be seen because like in this model, this is going to go over the top and you can see that there's not a lot of, uh, you know, there's, there's some very small windows. There's not a lot that's going to be seen of this cockpit. And so, you know, you're going to want to decide how much do I want to do because it can't be seen and how much do I want to do for the fun of doing it and for the experience of doing it. So for me in this, it's, it's very much one, it's so that I can film it and have videos and feed the YouTube algorithm, but I, I'm doing this both for the fun of doing it because I love doing stuff like this, but also to just continue getting experience in doing these things. The more often you do them, uh, the more familiar you are with it and, uh, and the better you get at it. So it's just a quest for experience. Um, uh, as much as anything. Now, when I'm thinking of, okay, how much can be seen underneath here? What I try to do is I try to think in terms of contrast. Um, what do I want to feature? What do I want to be seen? Uh, for example, if you watched, uh, the series I did on the Star Wars Legion, uh, patrol transport, the LAAT, I talked about in that, that when I painted the interior, I painted it generally very dark because I wanted the clone troopers that were flying it to stand out uh, on the inside because it was very shadowed in there. So I wanted them to be in high contrast against the background. However, in this one, because there's going to be very little that's going to be seen and I do want to give the scratch built details that I'm, that I've added to this a chance to be seen. What I plan to do in this is the background of the cockpit I'm planning on doing um, right now. My thinking is to do it in kind of a light green, uh, kind of like what you would see in say a Spitfire or something like that in World War II, maybe a little lighter than that, but just kind of a pale green color. And then I can paint the details uh, darker colors so that there's more contrast there and they can be seen. And then the pilot I'll do in a similar fashion. I'll paint him in such a way that there's going to be some contrast against the background. And hopefully there will be the reward if the eventual buyer, uh, you know, when they look in close at it, the reward will be seeing that, yes, there's some, there's some detail that wasn't in the original kit, um, in there and that, that they'll see something that's uh, compelling and cool. So contrast is uh, a, a very important factor to consider uh, when doing this. All right, the first step, of course, is gonna be to get this thing primed and then base painted and then start in on the actual painting. All right, I painted everything up. Uh, first, I primed it in black, then 
no special reason for the choice of black as a primer. It's just what was closest at hand. And then I painted it in a mix of uh, Tamiya XF1, and then I put in some, which is white, and then I put in some XF71, which I think is called IJN Cockpit Green. It's just kind of a pale, desaturated green. I wanted it to be lighter than it comes out of the bottle, so I started with white, mixed this in. When you're mixing colors, quite often, especially with white, it's easier to start with the white and add in the other color. It takes a lot of white to lighten up a color if you want it to be really light, but if you just add a little bit of it to the white, you get there quicker. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all of these little boxes and details and things like that using Vallejo German Gray. Now I use German Gray for this because it's basically because it's not pure black. The reason I don't want to use pure black is it doesn't give me any uh, visual, any, any ability to visually add uh, shadows or anything like that. If I started with pure black, I couldn't make it any darker. But by starting with something like German Gray, which is, of course, a, a lighter um, version of black, still very dark, but it's not quite pure black, it gives me the ability, if I want to later on, to add in some shadow. So I'll just get all these painted in very carefully and move on. Now, unless there's direct evidence to the contrary, in my mind, all seat pads need to be red. So, I'm going to start this off with Vallejo's Hall Red, and then later on, I'll build up a few highlights. Now, for any buttons, knobs, dials, or uh, displays like this, like these right here, and this right here, and the instruments, I like to paint these in. Vallejo Sky Gray. The reason I do this is if I put other colors over the top of it, such as red or yellow or something to indicate a button or, you know, a light or whatever, it's going to be much more vibrant in terms of its color. And if I want it to have a slight glow look to it, but I want it to look white, then I can add a touch of white over just part of the sky gray and that's going to give it a little bit of a glow effect just a little bit and if you look close <laughs> but if I don't paint any colors over this from a distance it will appear white in contrast against the black so again this is another case of not using the pure white or the pure black but rather something close to it so that it gives me the ability to build up highlights from there. All right, I've gotten all of those details painted in there. Now, w when you're doing that, if you, if you get any of the light paint over on the dark paint, um, don't worry about it. Just drive forward, keep doing it, let it dry, and then touch it up with some of the dark paint. You may have to go back and forth a couple of times. Um, I actually did on the instrument panel. There was a couple of places that I just couldn't seem to get one or the other and it took me a couple of passes but neaten it up and it'll be good to go now the next step I want to take is adding some definition to the shapes um, we obviously see the dark shape against the lighter green background but I want to do a little better job of defining the edges so that it is apparent that this is not just a flat panel that's painted on but rather something that's raised above the surface that it has some, uh, some uh, depth to it. Now, one way to do that would be to take a very fine brush and using a lighter color, just paint right along the edges of it. But because these edges, uh, I use such thin card to be able to fit in there, they're very fine. So I want to do something that's a little easier um, uh, to uh, make those edges stand out. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to dry brush and I'm just going to do it lightly along there like that and that'll just hit any of the raised edges and just bring out a little of the detail. I'm using the Vallejo Sky Gray, the same color I used to paint inside the instrument panels, but the color is not so much important as just wanting something that's fairly high contrast. I could use white here, 
I could use um, an, another kind of gray. Uh, I wouldn't use silver. That's going to give it more of a of a shiny, well, you know, chipped look. If you wanted to, you certainly could. But I prefer a light gray like this. And if a little gets onto the green area, it's really just going to highlight those edges, as you can see here, and it won't look bad at all. So that's a great way to bring out the edges and it doesn't take very long and it doesn't take real great brush control either. Now when it comes to painting all of the little buttons and switches and dials and things um, I like to use a variety of colors. If you've ever looked in any kind of cockpit or military civilian airliner cockpit whatever you're gonna see a lot of colors um, in terms of things that are active and lit, uh, things that are inactive and not lit. You're going to see warning signs. You're going to see red. You might see some green. It can just vary depending on uh, what the thing is. But to kind of indicate that there's things going on, it helps to have some different colors. Now to add variety to it, I like to do more than just paint a few red and maybe a few yellow. I like to paint some darker red and then on some use lighter reds or yellows or greens or whatever the color you choose to indicate that maybe something is active. So maybe looking at there's four little buttons here, uh, maybe these are all red, but when they're turned on, they have a glow effect to them. So maybe I might do a couple of them or even three of them with a darker red to indicate they're off and then a lighter red to indicate that one is on and glowing. In a larger scale, you may even want to do some, some lighting effects with uh, fluorescent paints or glazes or things like that to create a glow around it. In this scale, I think it's too small to do that. But to do this, just having some different paints on hand uh, can help. Like here, I've got some Vallejo paints, and you can see that it's four different or three different uh, shades of red going from darker to light. I've got the same thing here with these Citadel paints. For yellow, pardon the reach, <laughs> um, I like to actually use something like beige for the, the off state and then add some yellow over the top of it or paint something in yellow to indicate that it's lit. Same way with green. You can use a darker green and a lighter green. Of course, if you're going to want something to be white, if you've painted the others in sky gray, painting something pure white is going to give that same look that there's some kind of glowing effect going on. But the choice of it, of course, is up to you. It's can, it can look however you want. If you're replicating a real thing, well, of course, paint it like the real thing. But in this case, because this is not a real thing, we get to choose what we're going to do. So I'm going to use... Uh, mostly just some reds, and I think I'm going to introduce maybe uh, a yellow bit into it. If you decide, and I've done this before, if you decide you want to have red, yellow, green, blue, purple, all sorts of colors, go ahead. It can be kind of fun to do those. But having that variety is going to really add some realism to the small details in the cockpit. Some of these I'll pick out in the darker red. Some I'll do in the brighter red. One of the things I like to do is if I'm using a brighter red or any brighter color, sometimes paint it so that it's next to one of the darker colors so there's a little bit of contrast. It will help show that one is a little different than the other by them being next to each other and just can indicate something's going on here. Now I'll examine these couple of little sidewalls just to point out some of the logic behind um, what I've done. I've already talked about having lighter reds and darker reds or lighter yellows and things like that. So you can see that I've got you know, some lighter reds here, some darker reds here. I put some white on and you can see it in contrast to that sky gray and it really shows up brightly next to that. Right here on this circular dial, I painted one quarter of it red to indicate that okay maybe this is some kind of gauge that you know there's a part that okay when it gets into this area you need to be aware of it um, 
So, and then I painted one little thing over here beige just to kind of stand out away from the others. So you can, even in a very small space, just paint in a few different colors that give it some indication of glowing and difference and just things going on beyond just straight colors. It, it again, adds some realism and life to the model. Now for the two square displays, I think they're called multifunction displays in real life, I want to start the basis for kind of a green glow effect. So I'm going to drop in some Citadel Contrast paint. This is called Warpstone Lightning, or I'm sorry, Warp Lightning. And what I'm looking for here is it's going to tint the, uh, the background green, but the way the contrast paint works is it will generally pull away from the flatter areas and settle in the recesses, kind of like a wash. And that's what I'm really counting on here, is it getting into the corners and giving me kind of a dark green around the edge. So that's going to be what I start with. Well, I have to do this off camera so I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to use some of that darker red that I already had in my palette. I've got some of that lighter red too that I've been using on the instrument panel. I'm just going to go in and I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting around the edge of the seat just to give it a little bit of a gradient effect to give it a little depth. Now most of this is certainly not going to be seen but there may be a little bit that shows around the pilot and we'll give it a little depth and just give it again just some visual interest but more importantly this is a good way to get experience doing something that you may not have a lot of opportunities to do but when you have the opportunity to do it so that it can be seen you won't be doing it for the first time you can have painted it on many other things even if they weren't seen just so you have that experience that you can draw on. So I think it's a worthwhile exercise. You can see all I did was just add some successive layers of those shades of red, did a little bit of stippling to give it a little bit of a textured look, and that'll pass as a seat. And certainly you could use more colors and use glazes and be more involved in it if it's going to be seen more, but this is good practice to let you see what happens if I use three different shades of red in decreasing quantities and decreasing opacities and see how they interact together and how can I bring out the edges and the shapes. I want to add a little bit of definition to everything I've done so I'm just going to paint some non oil over this and I'm not going to worry about being too neat about it because I want the definition more than I'm worried about the staining. So what I do is I just paint that on there. I've put a little bit of flow improver into it so that it gets around all the details. And then once I'm done, I just go in and wick it up from the areas that I don't want. Now to make painting the pilot simple, I'm just going to use some Citadel Contrast paints. This is one called Agaros Dune that I'm going to use for painting the uniform. I'll be careful about doing this. I won't just slop it all over like a wash. But I'll put it on in the uniform, on the uniform areas, then let it dry, and then see if I want a second application. Now for the face, I'm going to use Gilliman's Flesh, but I'm going to have to do this off camera so I can get in close and see what I'm doing. But it's just another contrast paint, um, like I put over the uniform. Over the belts, I'll use another contrast paint, this one being Apothecary White. The helmet will be another contrast paint, this one being Militarum Green. And finally, the oxygen mask will be in Griff Charger Gray. I'm going to hit this with a hair dryer to dry it off pretty quick, and then hit it with probably two or three more coats. I just want this to be a little darker, but I don't want it to be black. I kind of like this bluish color that the Griff Charger Gray has to it. Now, I could go back in with 
traditional paints and just touch up and add highlights and shadows and things like that. But I think I'm going to leave it just like it is. One, again, a lot of this is going to be just kind of in shadow, not going to be really seen. This is going to read exactly like I want. Here's the pilot. Um, the other reason I did this was I'm a big advocate for experimentation and I've never painted a figure completely with contrast paints and not using nothing else um, to see the result. And I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, it's it's not something that if I were doing it as a standalone figure that I would uh, that I would recommend necessarily. I mean, unless you were you know using it for the game and you just wanted to get it on the tabletop quickly. But for the context of this build and this video, um, I'm happy with this. I like the way it looks. So. Just a few minutes with some contrast paints and our guy is done. Now a great way to give additional life to your cockpit is to use some cockpit decals and stencils and things like that. I've got this well used set here. This is actually in 70 second scale uh, from Mike Grant decals, but there are other brands of them. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut out a few of these instrument dials and pop them into the instrument uh, panels that I, I created. And I think I'm going to use a couple of these stencils on the sidewalls. It's really amazing how just adding a few uh, stencils along the sidewalls of a cockpit will really make it stand out. Uh, to be able to do this, I'm going to have to do it, as I've said a couple of times already in the video, I'm going to have to do it off camera so I can really see what I'm doing. But it's just simple decal application. There's nothing, nothing extraordinary about it. And here you can see, just adding a few little decals in, how that really makes things pop. They're optional, of course, but if you can get your hands on some, there's, like I said, these are from Mike Grant decals, but there are others who produce these. And uh, if you can get your hands on some, they're really a handy way to give it some added realism. All right, to further sell the notion that these are glowy things, I'm going to drop in some Citadel fluorescent green paint right here. I've thinned it down with a little bit of water. Now just to further sell the glow effect just a little bit, I'm going to glaze some of that fluorescent green, that Vallejo fluorescent green, around the edge of the panel. And I may do this in a couple of layers, but that'll just sell the notion a little more that it's glowing. Now to just push the glow effect a little further, I'm having fun with this. I'm going to pop in some fluorescent yellow mixed with the fluorescent green. Just kind of in the middle, like that. And that'll really just brighten up that center and sell the notion that it's glowing. To make the instruments seem like they're under glass, I'm going to put in a drop of acrylic gloss varnish. I'll just let that dry. It may take a couple of, a couple of applications to get it looking like I want. Now as pilots climb in and out of the cockpit and crews work in them, they're going to get some scuffing and some chipping and things like that. I could use a sponge method or a brush painted method or anything like that, but one of the simplest things to do in work, when working in small areas for chipping is to just use a mechanical pencil and just work in a few chips and scratches and things like that. And it's real easy to get some really petite chipping in, just like that. All right, you can see those side walls and the instrument panel there. And uh, I think they're looking the part with just a few simple uh, techniques applied to them. And there you can see the pilot and the seat in place. And uh, I think once inside, they'll, they'll do what they're supposed to do. It'll, it'll show some colors and, and uh, you know, you'll be able to recognize that as a pilot looking out at you. And there's everything in place. Now... Will most of this be seen? Nah, very little of it will be seen. But like I said, that's not the point. The point is having fun doing something with your hobby and learning from it. This is a great way, even if detail's not gonna be seen, it's a great way to practice detail, to test things out, like my use of the contrast paints. All of those things contribute to gaining experience in the hobby. And that's what it's all about. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're still watching at this point, I'm especially grateful. Um, there is a link down below to subscribe. You know where that's at. Please click that. 
and uh, I'd be grateful. There's also the little bell icon. Hit that so you'll know when I have a new video out. And uh, I would be very grateful if you would give this video a like and leave a comment down below just to let me know you watched. And share this on social media if you found it helpful. Maybe others will too. There's links down below to uh, my website and to other social media and, of course, Patreon. If you would like to support the, this work that I do, then I would be most grateful if you would consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much. Um, what you do makes what I do possible. Like I've said in every video, if it wasn't for you, we couldn't afford for me to do these things. So and not only am I grateful, but my family is grateful. And finally, with all that being said, I'll leave you with one thought, as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.